Hey folks, it's T Tuesday, 3126. We are at T minus nine uh, updates before we get to our artificial life creation coming up uh, in January, 2023. Take a look at this. Enough of that, it just bounces around for a little while. Uh, here we are uh, on the spreadsheet uh, leading all the way up to grandchildren for the ancestor. We're going to write a program that's going to run on the T2 tile grid that is going to copy itself and its program to produce kids, and those kids are going to copy themselves to produce grandkids. We'll see if we actually get there. So these were the goals for this time. Chain loops grow beyond four links. What the heck is that? Well, that's what we just saw, and that's what I'm going to talk about mostly uh, today. Build the cell wall. Uh, I did not do that. In fact, I went the other direction, and I took away the cell wall that I had been uh, messing around with. So in the demo that we just saw, in the video clip that we just saw, there was no uh, cell wall. So once again, there's only one uh, diamond matrix in the whole grid. OBS workflow refresh. I did some of that. It still needs more work but at least we've got uh, some new buttons set up for some more clips and so on have some fun uh, did mixed bag uh, the getting this chain loop stuff going was frustrating but it, well it felt better when I finally got there so why do we need chain loops at all well the idea is the big picture right we're gonna start uh, with some diamond matrix that represents the mother it's gonna grow it's gonna move around it's gonna move its stuff eventually split and end up with two and uh, that copying step in there is going to be copying the code that is governing the reproduction itself code guided reproduction including reproducing the code and that code that digital dna i'm calling it is what we're going to use this chain loop for what we were just seeing so here's the title card uh, for today engineering digital dna you know and there it is so we've got this loop going around uh, um, and, you know, this is not meant to be a model of real DNA at all. Uh, you know, there's no helixes, no backbones, no GATC, nothing. It, it's all very abstract. And essentially what we want to take away from DNA is that it's essentially one dimensional. It's essentially a line, even though, yes, it has the double helix and so on. But from step back, it's, uh, it's copied linearly in a line. It's transcribed, turned into other stuff in a line and so forth. And we're going to do the same thing here so okay um oh and speaking of which you know so we had all these little lines which was very handy to help us to see how the loop was growing in the opening video uh, i want to talk about where those lines came from because uh, uh well i mean for one thing you know none of the stuff that we're going to see today is running on the t2 tile grid itself or I mean, it, it is running on the T2 tile grid itself, but it just started like today or last night. Uh, uh, so there's nothing yet to see, and I want to make some changes to it anyway. So all the stuff we're going to see today is in the MFMS simulator, uh, uh, which has the virtue that it's easier to play with and we can see it. But, you know, this is the exact same picture if there weren't those uh, lines. So it's like good luck trying to figure out who's connected to who that way. So the lines really help. So I wanted to just show a little bit about that. So here is the MFMS simulator. Uh, I've got this thing set up. If we let it, uh, let's see, let's let it spread out if, it, if we can. Uh, okay, beautiful. Uh, um, so there it is. So it, it popped its first little loop. 
Uh, um, and it looks uh, a lot like what we saw uh, in the uh, opening video. Uh, now it's it's gone up to four. Now it's at six. Uh, uh, but look at this. Um, you know the MFMS. Simu so where'd those lines come from? Well, they came from this custom graphics button. Uh, we can click it and they go away. So basically, you can write code to say that when it's time to draw a picture of an atom on the screen, you can get in and add your own stuff. And that's what I wrote for this thing to draw a long line heading one direction out of the the so heading in the whoops where are we going here uh, um the long side is the logical downstream the short side is logical upstream so if you work at it you always have a short one next to a long one a short one next to a long one so in this case if we go clockwise we're going upstream if we go counterclockwise we're going downstream but that just happened to be because of this particular one and so let's see. So it, we can reconfigure this. So if we, uh, let's see. So we're going to make the, oops, I went all the way around. So we make the back uh, dark so that we can see what's going on. All right, dark, there it is. Uh, and we turn the middle display, that's the circle part. We turn it off completely. Uh, um, uh, change it, site paint, none. And we change front, that's a little bitty square that we put uh in the center of things there like that and now look at this uh, uh now we have essentially just the representation of the custom graphics that we wrote the long line meaning downstream the short line meaning upstream the little dot in the middle meaning whatever particular type it is uh, um and you know it's actually a lot easier to see uh what's going on with this so this is a nice thing and in fact i mean all this stuff will work on the tile as well it's just uh, uh, you know, we don't have the virtue of all these buttons that we can change and configure it on the fly because the whole point of the grid is that it works by itself. All right, and this thing's going fine. So uh, that was the demo. And yes, and here's a sample of what it looks like coming out of this. And, you know, the life lesson for this is that this work beats debug work. And this is just in, in the kind of programming I do, the sort of open-ended research programming, time invested improving visualizations always pays back multiple in improved debugging, easier debugging, seeing bugs quicker. So that's what happened here. So that was nice. Uh, uh, all right, moving on. Uh, uh, so the basic problem, how are we actually going to grow one of these loops? Now, you know, DNA in actual life is, you know, some, some of it is arranged in a circle, in a loop, uh, uh, but a lot of it isn't. Uh, uh, I'm designing the, uh, the, the chains that we're using here to be stored in a loop and to be generally used in a loop, although we'll be able to pop them apart and do other things with them as well. So the basic idea is, you know, if we have a thing going along, we want to take a single segment and replace it with the other three sides of the box. So here it is. Uh, here, here we have the minimum case of a demo atom connected to a new grow atom. I hate calling things new because, of course, in 10 minutes it's not new anymore, and then you have to make super new and post new and post new post and so forth. And so, but in this case, I had already built like three full implementations of this stuff, and nothing was working the way I was like it, and I was getting really cranky about it, so I let myself call it new just to express my crankiness. Uh, uh, so the grow atom pops out a new corner. The new corner tries to pop out a new side. The new side realizes it can hook up uh, to the original base uh, and it can make the square and that's how it works but there is another problem so here's a similar case uh, the grow pops out a corner and the corner wants to pop a side going down but there's something already there what are we supposed to do about it well you know we're supposed to be best effort we should do something so you know we can wait now in this case that se that's a seed that in fact is going to go away in another dozen or so events we could just wait it out and then continue and get the job done so I worked around trying to figure out what to do. You can make a counter, but then that takes up bits, and then you have to decide how big a counter you want. Uh, so how long should you wait? What I ended up doing was saying, let's you know, let's wait a good long time because we're trying to do this. We've already built a bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, so I said, you know, two percent of the time. If one in fifty hits, then we'll just give up e e because it's blocked. Otherwise, we'll just bounce around. Hope things get better and so forth. And that was the clip that we saw in the opening. Here I've got another clip that we can see using the new display. Let's take a look at that. It's nice, huh? Oh, 
Uh, uh, you know, so this this is one big box in a single tile that's basically the same size as the uh, Diamond Matrix. So it can only go back and forth, and there we see it growing out. We've got these yellow and these blue-green things. Those are two different kinds of temps. At the moment, we're growing this uh, loop, but we're not filling it with anything. So those are all basically just temps available that are cycling around uh, uh, to do it. And eventually, it mostly fills up the matrix, which, you know, the loops that we're going to use for our code will never really do that. Uh, um, it, it, because we have plenty of other things that we need to have inside the matrix as well, but for this demo and so on. Uh, uh, so that looked pretty good. Uh, um, okay. As I was debugging it, I was starting to realize, you know, this is taking forever to find that last available spot because it has to work a new grow all the way around the ring. It has to try here, try here, move on, try here, try here, until eventually it gets next to the one spot where it could actually grow again and it takes forever. And eventually I realized that thinking about my best effort, maybe I was thinking about it wrong and I ought to be thinking, don't worry, be crappy. The uh, expression from Guy Kawasaki, a sort of tech uh, uh, evangelist and a, a Mac guy in the early days of Apple and so forth. Uh, don't worry. An innovator doesn't worry about shipping with elements of crappiness if it's truly innovated. Well, you know, <laughs> the movies machine and the teacher tile has plenty of crappiness in it, but yeah. It's truly innovative. So, all right. Uh, um, so I said, you know, eventually I said, you know, let's change these odds. You know, why are we beating our heads against this wall if most of the time it is not a seed that's going to disappear in a few events? Most of the time it's another part of the loop, which isn't going anywhere. So eventually I said, you know, 75% uh, of the time, try again, just in case. Uh, uh, but 25% of the time, let's move on. And here's a result actually comparing uh, uh, the one that we just saw with this uh, new approach. Uh, uh, so the one in the upper left is the stuff that we just saw. And then here is the newer one. And it's it's like a day and night. <laughs> uh, um, the... Uh, This guy has got a quarter full. This thing has barely gotten started. Uh, these are being displayed at the same time compression rate. This is displayed in cubic time, so that as you know, five seconds goes by, something proportional to five cubed is how much time has passed in the simulated world. There, it's essentially done. Uh, um, and in fact, I started it over to have another one. Uh, um, and so, you know, now we'll see it in a second here. There, that, that was actually a failure, but the failure was not due, I believe, to the uh, the change in the, uh, the probabilities. The probabilities just made it easier for it to turn up. So there's still more work to be done. All right, uh, yeah, you know, this is a screen grab from uh, the T minus uh, ten update from last time. You know, and it, it doesn't look really great. These. <laughs> And things that are hanging over on several different segments and and, and yarn i'm not going to try to say your last name you know who has been uh following the project and and contributing for a long long time thank you you know had this comment you know is it possible to try to make it the, it's a little easier to see what's going on and i had been thinking that too uh, uh so i did a little test so here's here's what it is i just took it into gimp the image pro program and i took the lcd images and scaled them up a little bit and plopped them right down back in the same place i got something like this which actually taught me stuff that i didn't know before that if you take the size of the pixels the sites on the lcd as defining the x and y uh, length scale then the T2 tiles are a little bit too tall for the number of sites they have in the rows. We shall see. I did some early tests on this, so writing some scripts to try to get this to happen using FFmpeg. We'll see if it's going to work out. In other news, uh, uh, the new computing up just came out uh, yesterday. Another thing to get done. Uh, uh, it was a fun conversation. If you have room for podcasts uh, uh, in your uh, daily schedule, uh, you might give it a try. This was a particularly fun conversation. Uh, um, in addition, uh, Andrew Davison, who's a hero of mine, uh, he developed SLAM, so, so simultaneous location and mapping, did a bunch of computer science stuff. Uh, uh, he, uh, he posted a thing, and, and we had a little interaction on Twitter, and he loved my stuff. 
Uh, so that was really great, and uh, I'm going to hope and get in touch with him, and, and who knows, we'll see. Maybe he could be on Computing Up one day. Uh, uh, and that's it. The next one uh, to update will be in two weeks on August 16th. The goals for then are actual loop operations, not just growing until there's no more room to grow, but actually moving things around, maybe even you know cutting and putting stuff together and stuff like that. The things that we'll need to do to do the master plan, to reorganize code, copy, it, that sort of thing. It's time to get back to the cell borders and try to make them better. If we're lucky, we'll have a debezelification demo so that we can see stuff running on the actual T2 grid and maybe it'll look a little easier to see. And that is it. Uh, uh, and we'll try to have some fun. Yeah, and I will continue here as usual in the live stream after this is over. I just want to get this rendering. Thanks for coming by. I hope everybody's doing okay. Hope to see you next time.